Hello everyone. I hope you can hear me. Sorry for being late. Uh, I was struggling with the setup. I hope you can hear me. Let me uh, let me see that. Oops. So I should be live, but I don't see it there. Yeah, I'm live. So why does it say I'm offline there? Strange. Welcome for today's session. Sorry for being late. I was just struggling with OBS, you know, the, the software you need to, uh, so it's called OBS. And that's the software that makes it easier to uh, uh, stream uh, with different screens and cameras. Um, so I think, well, I hope it will work. So the, the schedule for today is um, generating, uh, generating semantic networks. Uh, And we're going to wait just one or two minutes uh, to see uh, who's joining for today. Um, so the topic is is pretty uh, um, is pretty important and, and difficult, I would say. Um, turning a text into a network is um, offers a lot of issues and problems, uh, and we're going to discuss all of that and practice. So I'm waiting just a bit more. Okay, it seems to work. I don't know if you can hear the back. Oh, there is no background music. Oops, because I was just, sorry for the ears. I was just struggling to, well, again, to have this session uh, to launch. But now we could maybe add a couple of uh, refinements. The first one is having the mouse pointer uh, a bit more visible for you. Yeah, so that's going to be easier now. And second, a bit of music for the background. I hope you can hear it. And I hope it's not too loud. If it's too loud, please let me know. As usual, uh, I'm going to post the links and resources that I mentioned in the stream on this link. Yes, so it's to look at the chat, uh, the link for the document is in the chat. So if you have any question, just um, well, say hi in the chat or um, ask me questions. Um, I'm going to do my best to to uh, well, explain and find solutions. But honestly, preparing for now, uh, 
there are so many uh, issues to be solved. The best way to, to have good semantic networks is going to be uh, to have user feedback on the existing methods. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of methods that I have created. Uh, they are less than perfect and and I would really encourage you to um, you know, get in touch with me uh, now or later to, to, uh, uh, to show me examples of networks you created and pointing where we have insufficient quality so that I can improve the tools and, and in a couple of weeks or months, we should be able to have excellent methods for, uh, to create semantic networks but what is crucial is user feedback with examples um, yeah okay so that's enough maybe for for the uh, prologue uh, we can start um, what we're gonna review today is uh, three methods um, that can be used to create semantic networks so let me show that to you. Oops, not this one. Let me fix that. Yeah, that's the one. So the website where I um, where I put all the, the tools I create for myself and for you. This website is uh, No Code Functions. You see it in French here, uh, but it's super easy to uh, change the language. So let's choose English. Uh, how could I? I would like to see just your comments and not the window because it's a bit uh, distracting. How could I do that? I don't know, oh, chat, chat is here, I think. Okay, so we're going to see three methods to um, create networks from text. Uh, as you uh, the website is called nocodefunctions.com uh, and this is um, not just a website, it's a web application. Basically what it does is uh, it's a website that gives you access to a server that runs um, any of the functions you see uh, that you see as blue buttons um, so you can really think that of that as an interface to a powerful uh, computer that uh, runs any of the functions that you see uh, there why I am Oh yeah, that's the, that's the thing, okay. Um, so, many functions, uh, but the ones to create text, uh, we're gonna look at uh, the two methods that are behind uh, this uh, button, create networks from lists. So let's click on it. So this function gives you uh, two options. The first one is to create um, a network when you have lists of items or entities. Um, so it could be uh, a CSV file, which means a comma separated uh, values file. As you see, it's Clement, 
comma, marry, comma, etc. on the first line. So the values are separated by commas. That's why it's called a comma separated value CSV file. In the second line, you know, another list of items which are separated by a comma, etc., etc. So if you choose option one, you need to have these kind of files. Uh, and what is it going to do with it? It's going to create uh, a network where two entities are connected if they were in the same, on the same line. So here you see that, this is of course just an example, but uh, it's going to create a network where Mary is visible, Bruno is visible among others, and Mary will share uh, a link with Bruno because somewhere in the file they are in the same line, in the same line. And that's indeed the case right there. Marie and Bruno appear on the same line. Um, what can be said? Yes, look at what is explained right there. Uh, can I zoom out? Yeah. The more rows two entities share, uh, the thicker their connection or the stronger their connection. So here, I'm not sure we have the case, uh, no. Uh, but basically, if, if Clément and Vincent were together on a line, but actually together on several lines, so maybe here you would have Clément and Vincent too, then the link, in the end, the link that would be created between Clément and Vincent would, would get uh, thicker. So that's... Uh, uh, that's useful. Um, uh, the, the use case would be when um, you have. Uh, uh, why would you use this method? Uh, the reason would be, for example, that you would study um, 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 groups um, like um, uh, boards. Uh, that's the term I was looking for. Uh, you know, boards of companies, um, and you have people who are b members of the boards of different companies, not just one. So if what you could do with this method is have a list in a file, uh, all the members of a board, of a given board on the first line, and then all the members of a second board of a company, in, in, in the second line, and you would basically have on each line all the members of the boards of different companies. Okay, and where it would get interesting is that an individual could appear on a given line, but on several lines. And transforming your, your lists into the network uh, with this method would help you spot immediately um, how is an individual connected with other individuals through their common board memberships? Uh, I have this example in mind because uh, it has actually been uh, uh, done. Um, so if I uh, remember, if I can remember it, uh, after this live, uh, I'm gonna uh, add a, a, a link to this um, example of shared board memberships uh, so that you can uh, look by yourself but that's exactly uh, what they did you know they, they had lists like this like the list uh, illustrated here and um, and they turned it into a, a network so that's option one option two is completely different um, but the reason why I put the two um, uh, under the same, you know, uh, function is because you still have, um, even if it's super different, you still have the, uh, uh, um, a list. Um, you know, it's it's the it's the logic of analyzing lists of things and turn, turning them into networks. So maybe it's self-explanatory what you see here, but let me. Um, rephrase that the goal of this method is to 
have um, uh, a look at the entities on the left column. So here, this would be the students. Um, uh, so Vincent, Jamie, Lucy, and Louise. These are the ones that's gonna end up in the network we're gonna create. But why and how are they going to be um, connected? Um, Vincent and Jamie are gonna be connected in the network if they, sh if they have something in common um, in, the, in the column um, that is just at the right of them. So Vincent and Jamie are gonna be connected in the network if among the courses they took, if there is at least one course in common. So in this case, yes, um, Vincent and Jamie, the two uh, took marketing as a course, so they're gonna be linked on the network. And yes, as you see, um, there is a link there. And Louise and Lucy, can I zoom in here? Yeah, great. Louise and Lucy, as you see in the network that has been generated, they're gonna have a, a thicker uh, line. And the reason is that when you look at the, maybe I can zoom in here, no, too big. Uh, Lucy and Louise, yeah, they, they had two classes out of three that they shared, modern literature and linguistics. So that's what these two things, um, these two uh, ways of creating networks, that's how they work. Um, so lo now let's do that in practice. Uh, let me show you an example of a network. I think it's exactly the network I, uh, 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 that you have seen, but we're gonna see the real file. Yeah, let me open it. Uh, no, slightly different. Very good. Oops, oops, oops. Not too big. Okay, so I just opened a, a, um, an Excel file. Um, by the way, you should be careful that uh, you need, uh, you don't, the, the application doesn't use the old uh, format for Excel files, you know, the XLS uh, file extension. You need XLS X uh, file extensions. Uh, maybe just to clarify, uh, I'm gonna write that here. XLX doesn't work. Can I do a drag through here to be fancy? Yeah, sorry, I'm gonna just bore you with that. Yeah, so XLS wouldn't work. You need, you need an XLS X file. Okay, I hope I did not mess up with the, uh, with the input file. Let me delete all the columns just to be sure. So let's say we have um, four, uh, we have how many teams? We have five, six teams. And for each team, we have uh, their team members. So that's the kind of files you need for the co-occurrence type of network generation. I hope it's clear. So let me close this file That's, and we're gonna import it on the website. So as you see, I selected, I selected co-occurrences to network. That's the thing I want. So I click on it. It uh, asked me to upload my data. So let's do that. Yes, indeed, I have an Excel file. So I 
upload it. And then you need to click, your name is not clear here, on read the data. So it reads your file, uh, nothing is found and the trick is, uh, it's not that there is a mistake, it's just that the data actually in the file is in the sheet number two. Uh, so what it did, as you see, it's a bit weird. Let me zoom in for you. I hope you, you see it. Uh, zooming is here. Well, not super clear. Can I? Oops. I'm just trying to center on the screen. Yeah, so what it did is, oops, 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 is the, yeah, what it did is uh, read the Excel file I just showed you, but to, it, it shows the, the contents of this Excel file in a weird way, you know, uh, um, showing this. It's the way I found to express that Vincent is connected with Esther, Stefan is going to have a connection with Louise, etc., etc. So it's a purely a uh, convention. So you don't have to to worry about this weird stuff. Um, uh, an option is is offered to you know to neglect the first line. So the first line should not be in the results because it's just the title of your columns. So yes, my data has, has headers, uh, and that's it. Then you click on compute. And that was a small file, so the result is almost instantaneous. Um, let me go back to full screen. <coughs> uh, what we can do then is uh, open the file on, on, in Giphy. So if you don't know Giphy, uh, Giphy is the, the leading solution uh, to uh, visualize and explore networks. Um, and so the, the web application that we are using here uh, creates a file that Giphy can open. Uh, the file is with the extension .gexf. So let's do that here. Yes, uh, I save it here. So results, um, co-occurrences. Open it. So I'm opening Giphy. You don't see it on screen, but it's opening. Coming to, to view in a minute. Yeah. Okay, so this network is just the file I just done, uh, created on the web application and downloaded it to my laptop. Uh, I opened it in Giphy, so the software was installed on my computer already and uh, when I launch the file it automatically launches uh, Giphy. And just to make sure that this file is not just some uh, random uh, sticks of uh, uh, you know, nodes and edges, um, I can just show the labels. I think it's this T here. Yeah, so the labels are visible. Uh, let me apply a layout here. Oops, not surprising. A bit more. Uh, gravity can be lower. Uh, what could I do? Prevent overlap. Um, yeah, that's not too bad. And then, and then, and then, and then, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, and then, mm, and then I'm gonna just reduce the size of the nodes to one. Yes, that makes the labels easier to read. And then a bit of label adjust. 
and lay an overlap. Okay, good. So oops, let's make the nodes a bit bigger or even bigger so that I can select them. So Esther and Vincent have a strong connection, stronger than all the others. And if we go back to the file, Esther and Vincent, I would expect them to be members of two or three teams in common. So Esther and Vincent are in one team, you know, line number three, and they are members of a second team. Uh, line number five so that's why on the network right there they appear with a stronger connection than, than the others okay so that's that's about it for for the uh, for this first way to create a, a network and I, I call it um, you know generating a network from co-occurrences because as you see this is when two, um, two individuals co-occur, or two entities, this is when they co-occur that they um, get a connection in the network. Okay, so that's good. Let me check. Second way now, uh, let me close this file in Giphy. If you have any question, you are more than welcome, by the way. Um, uh, second way, oh, I have to go back to, so I go, go back to no code functions, I go back to the menu, and go back to where I was. Create networks. Oops, I'm back in French. Sorry. Create networks from lists. So now we're going to explore the second option, source and targets. So let me show you uh, an example. So I open, I open an Excel file, which has this aspect. So the, the point is to have a network where the column on the left describes the nodes we're going to have. It's, maybe it's important, uh, you know, anything that appears, that does not appear on the left column will not be in the network. Basically, these are, you know, the taste in ice cream, these are just um, um, uh, material that is being evaluated to uh, decide whether the people on this column will be connected but the taste in ice cream will not appear uh, in the network i suppose it's clear but i just wanted to highlight and insist on that so here what would we expect we would expect uh, simi judith and federico to be connected because the three of them love chocolate. We would expect Simi to be connected with Muriel because the two of them, ooh, they like vanilla, but as you see, there is, a, there is a spelling mistake in vanilla. So even if that's the same taste, the, sp the spelling is not the same. So that's interesting. I'm gonna keep it like that. So Muriel is gonna be alone on the network because she's the only one who likes vanilla with, uh, with a single L. Interesting. So it just, once again, it just shows that, you know, the quality of the data uh, should be checked. Um, and then Juliette, Juliette uh, likes strawberry, so she's going to be connected with uh, Simi who likes strawberry as well. Okay, so let me close the file. So we choose option two. 
it offers to open a file. Yes, thank you very much. The file is this one, the one I just showed you. Then upload. Okay, it's uploaded. Then you click on read the data. So the data has been read and uh, just like the previous, uh, it, it offers you to, to select this tick box if, you, if the first line of your file is actually you know, the headers of the columns, so not the data, but just the title of the columns. If you have such a line, you click on my data has headers. And then what you, and maybe that's where it's not intuitive at all. So that's good that we have a video here, uh, a live session. And what you should just tick there is the column where your soul, where, you know, the, where the entities are, the entities that you want to see in the network. Um, the convention, and it's not super clear from the, from the application. The convention is that the column on the left should be the entities you want to see in the network. And all the columns on the right, not just the first one, but all the columns on the right are going to be interpreted as uh, the targets, you know, the things that your entities can have in, in common. So here it's pretty simple. Um, I just want to click here. The question is why, why do I have just two columns? Because if you remember the file, if you remember the file, it has more than two columns. Ah. Okay, it's because it's because they don't have headers. So I don't know. Maybe you know, if I had put some headers there. Maybe these two columns would have been considered for sources, but I mean, I don't really care because my sources are there, right? But I'm still curious why these two columns did not appear. Um, why they did not appear there. I have just two columns. Well, uh, I would suggest you always take the, the, com the column the most on the left for your sources and have all your all the other columns on the right so you click there and just ask you to confirm this column is the source and the columns on the right are the targets yes that's what I want and that's it again it goes super fast because the example is uh, pretty uh, simple uh, okay maybe you could change and, and visualize it with the voice viewer uh, so let's do that and i let you have a look at, so you can make the visualization public. It's something we discussed, uh, I think last week. Yeah, last week in the previous uh, uh, stream where we discussed how to export a, a network from um, Giphy to the web. Then I, I discussed also the what we see here, you know, the fact that you could um, visualize networks on the web with, uh, you know, with no-code functions, the website uh, I developed. Um, and then uh, basically uh, I realized that I had these two options, either keep the visualization private or make it public. And preparing for the talk of today, uh, I, I got my ideas a bit more clear. So basically making the visualization public is going to keep your visualization online forever. Uh, I put double quotes because uh, and my, my server is not, uh, you know, enterprise grade or company grade. It's like I'm, I'm still an individual doing my best, but uh, uh, there is no guarantee that it's going to stay uh, online for decades or centuries. Decades, I'm going to try, but centuries, certainly not. So uh, making the visualization public is offering you the, you know, the, the, um, the strong possibility that your visualization, you can, you can share it on the web uh, and it's going to stay there for, for years or decades. But 
Uh, there is no like contractual guarantee that uh, my servers are always going to stay up. But if you don't tick this, if you don't select this option, you want to keep your visualization private. It means that, yeah, you don't want it to stay forever on the web. You just want to uh, see it now on the web, but just for a limited amount of time. So if you don't select it, basically what you're going to create now is going to be erased in, in an hour. So we can do that. Uh, but it, it gives you the time to uh, uh, visualize it and, and then download it. You can, uh, let, let me show you. So you just click there. And as you see the, well, we don't see it too. So there is, who is this person? Simi, can we? Can't we just make the labels bigger? Let me try and make the labels bigger. Yeah, great. So by the way, you know, you have this panel there that you can just open. And as expected, Simi is connected. So Simi is connected to Juliet. Is it normal? Yeah, because the, the two of them like strawberry. Uh, Judith and Frederica Oko are connected because they like chocolate and the two of them are connected to Simi for sure. And Muriel is, where is Muriel? Well, Muriel has not been uh, considered because she's connected with nobody. So, well, maybe she could have been included as an isolated node, but um, not the case. If you want to export this uh, network, uh, I think just clicking there, save. It saves the network as a, a voice viewer uh, JSON file. Um, um, and just if you, so you can open it later with voice viewer, which is a desktop uh, application for networks. But if you would prefer to open it with Giphy, you can also use no code functions to, to convert your voice viewer file into a, a GXF file that, that Giphy can, can read. But yes, that's pretty much it for this second way to create uh, networks from text. So it's about um, connecting entities that share stuff in common. Checking the comments, it's super silent. I hope nobody's uh, sleeping or... Okay, back to, back to the, back to the main. I'm gonna just have a sip of water. So if you use um, semantic networks or if you have use cases where they would make sense, I would be super happy to, uh, um, to exchange with you um, and see whether these applications that I'm showing here, whether they fit your needs or if there is anything that, uh, that uh, could be improved. Okay, so we're gonna move to the last one uh, for the last uh, 15 to 20 minutes, uh, which is um, how, to, how to go from a, um, a raw piece of text. So not the, you know, the two cases I've shown uh, before where you, need, you needed tables of text. So some text which was pretty much uh, structured. Now what, what we're gonna see is uh, a case where you have a text which is um, just in, in a free form. So think of a long document. And how can you turn it into a network? So to do that, uh, to do 
do that. Yeah, you're gonna click on transform text into networks. And, uh, and what you can do is three things. Uh, so I'm gonna start with the bottom. You can search and import tweets. Uh, this function is pretty limited as we speak. Uh, it's gonna, I hope I'm gonna find the time to improve it in the coming weeks or months. And I could do that if it's uh, important to you. So please let me know. Uh, this function uh, is gonna help you retrieve tweets uh, and it's gonna analyze them um, tweet per tweet. The second option is a case where the text that you have is stored in a CSV file or an Excel file. In this case it's gonna uh, ask you in which column is the text that you would like to analyze. It will not analyze all the text from all the columns, it's going to analyze only the text from a given column. Uh, and, if, and we're going to have a case like that to demonstrate. And the last case is plain text. So you just have something like a you know a txt file a file ending in dot txt and it's going to analyze each of the lines of this file so in practice i kept saying it's going to analyze going to analyze but what is the analysis uh, in practice it's super simple it's going to use the logic where to create a network from a text is going to list all the most frequent terms in the text. So it's gonna first count the words and it's gonna keep for the network only the terms that are that appear at least two or three times. Uh, I think it's a parameter that you can choose uh, in the next screen, but um, uh, let's check that. So it's going to count first the terms in your net in your text, and it's going to, it's going to uh, remove and not consider the terms that appear just once or twice. Um, second, it's going to I say it's going to you know take the words, but it's going to also take the uh, it's called technically an n-gram. Let me uh, write that in the chat an n-gram. So the, the function is going to find the n-grams in the text. And what is an n-gram? An n-gram is um, uh, a group of words that follow each other. So if you think of, uh, you know, uh, I live in Paris, so it's a line of text, I live in Paris. Um, what are the words in this sentence? I live in Paris. Paris. So it's pretty simple. You're gonna take these words, but it's not always that simple. If you think of um, I live in Saint Etienne, what are the words? I live in Saint Etienne. So five words. But the thing is, the two last words, Saint Etienne, or maybe to be a bit more, a bit more, because Saint Etienne is not that famous. It's a city in France. Uh, I could choose uh, New York. Also, there is an, an, a hyphen between Saint and Etienne. So, is it one word? Is it two words? Let's take New York. I live in New York, and you realize that New York should be considered as just one term, right? But if you just blindly cut and split the sentence. Each time you find a white space, New and York are going to be separated and not considered as a, a single entity or a single expression. So that's why n-grams, um, so uh, groups of words that are long of two words like New York or three words like 
like um, <laughs> like I don't know uh, uh, three words Mont Saint Michel uh, which is a famous place in France um, and four grams so meaningful groups of four, of four words, uh, United States of America. Ideally, all these um, uh, groups of words would not, I mean, they would be taken into account, right? Because you, you, you don't want to have in the network in the end, you don't want to have like New and York uh, that will appear as separate nodes. Uh, because it makes no sense. You would have, you like to have New York together. Same for machine learning. You would like to have machine learning is a type of artificial intelligence. Uh, you would like to have machine learning as a group, and not machine and learning because the two are meaningful when they are together. Um, and so uh, this function takes care of that. So what did I say? Okay, it's gonna take the most frequent terms, then it's gonna detect the engrams, you know, the meaningful ones. Uh, and then it's gonna, yeah, uh, it's gonna just look at the way um, it's gonna create connections between these frequent terms. So which connections? Very simple. It's gonna create a connection between two terms if these two terms appear on the same line of the text that's it um, and if these two terms appear on many lines not just one but many lines in the text the connection between these two terms is going to be stronger um, and that's how a semantic network can be generated just by counting these terms and the connections between them. Um, one of the consequences, as you, uh, as you imagine, is that it's super important to define what is a line in the text. Because I just said that a network would be made of terms and a connection between the two terms if the terms appear on the same line but what is a line is it a sentence is it just a line and and you know when the when the text goes to the second one even if it's the same sentence you know is it a second line in practice uh, the, the the definition that is being used by this um, by this software or this web application is that a line is a piece of text until a line break. So a line break is um, a symbol that we do not see in a text, right? It's an invisible symbol in, in, a, in, a, in a text. But this is the thing that, um, that you create when you hit the return key on the keyboard or entrée, uh, quand vous appuyez sur entrée in French. But in English, when you hit return on a keyboard to just, you know, break the line and go back to a, and create a second line, this is what cuts the text into different lines according to this, uh, uh, to this web application. Uh, so it's pretty meaningful in the sense that uh, in practice, the, you can have a full paragraph that defines a line. And, and as long as you don't hit a line break, as, as long as you don't introduce a, a line break, uh, the, the text you have, um, you, you have uh, written is, is just considered a, a big, big line and it's gonna stop and go to the next line just when it finds a line break. Um, yes, uh, what can I say? Uh, the last, not, not the last because I have other things, but another super important thing is stop words. You have terms 
in English and in French and in any language that are super frequent but they are not super informative. So in English a term that is super frequent is have. You know, the, the verb to have is uh, one of the most frequent verbs and terms in, in English. So if you remember what I said about you know this app that takes the most frequent terms in the text and then it connects them according to whether they belong to the same lines. If we would just do that, the, the term have would, would appear many, many times uh, in, in any text and it would end up being super central in the network that you create. Uh, And the reason is that, uh, again, uh, the, the term is not super informative, it's just to have, or I have, or we have, but it's not super informative, but it's so frequent nonetheless that it's going to be central in the results. So these kind of terms uh, are uh, removed from the, uh, from the, uh, from the final result and how simply by you know the app has a list of these terms that should be removed so it's super tricky because you know is this list big enough maybe that a lot of uh, of terms that are frequent should be uh, should be removed from this list from should be removed from the network and so they should be included in this list i think that's one of the major uh, you know, uh, that's one way the app should be improved. The, the list of stop words, you know, this uh, this list that are this list of words that are too frequent. Uh, I, I suppose they should be improved. They should be uh, improved. This list. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so maybe now I could demonstrate what it does. So when it says, um, yeah, so you can export from plain text, structured text in columns or tables, or search and import tweets. So I'm gonna do, I just recently improved and changed a bit how it works, so I hope it's, it's gonna give a meaningful result. Um, so just to, um, just to tell you where is the data coming from, the data that I'm going to show you now. Uh, so in the school I belong to, we have this um, access to uh, a bibliom bibliometrics or scientometrics database, which is a database of all the publications in a in, in science, so we don't have access to all the papers and uh, publications that have been uh, made, uh, but it's called Web of Science, and this, this database gives at least a list of all the publications in science. Uh, and you can search this humongous uh, list of publications, um, as I just did. So I, I search for explainable artificial intelligence, which is a topic I'm interested in at the moment. So I search for this in the topic. I could have searched in the abstract. Yeah, in the abstract, but topic I suppose includes, yeah. If you search in the topic, let me zoom in. Oops, that's slightly, yeah, maybe you see it here. When you search in the topic, it means you're gonna search in the title and the abstract and the author keywords and the keywords plus of the publication. So in the topic of all the publications that are in this database, I search for explainable, explainable artificial intelligence. I clicked on search and it found, let me zoom, yeah. It found uh, 1,283 publications on this topic. Mm -hmm. So then I clicked on export and I exported this list as an Excel file. And in, uh, 
practice the excel file oops 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 let me show it to you so yeah be careful and i was kind of surprised by that it exports the data as an as an excel file in the old format of excel you know xlx xls and as i said at the beginning of this uh, session actually you need an xls x you know the newer version of excel uh, file so just open the file and save it with the newer file format uh, check, check, check. okay you see it so what i did is uh i there were there were many more columns than just this ones but i was ju just afraid that it would be a bit too uh, too big for my app so i just removed a lot of columns and kept only uh, the first ones the first columns and the ones on abstract um, i suppose that so an abstract in, in science is just you know the the summary of a publication uh, it helps the reader understand better what is the publication about uh, is that super clear so let me yeah. so each line is an abstract of a publication so not you have empty cells sometimes a publication uh, does not have an abstract but many times you have, uh, you do have uh, an abstract. And if I'm not, I didn't check that. If I'm not mistaken, just let's copy this one and open it in a, in a text editor. Yeah, great. Let me show you. So I just copied a, a, you know, an abstract from the Excel file. And I copied that, I, I pasted that in a, in a text editor. Can I zoom in? Yeah. And if you see, it, it's a big chunk of text, and yet it's just one line according to the definition I, I gave you. You know that a line is anything that is not, without a line break. Because you have a lot of sentences, like, you know, oops, no, it's there. <laughs> Sorry, too many screens. Uh, you know, you have a sentence and a second one, and a second, a third one here. But to look at which word um, co occurs with another one, you know, this thing is going to take as just one line. So, how does it, uh, yeah. How does it look on on the app? So let's try that. Uh, good. Well, I can stay there. It's just that I hope I, I didn't time out because I was talking so, so much. So I just refresh refresh the page. I click on here because it's an Excel file. So I open the file, which is. Uh, Loaded. Then you have to click on read the data in the file, and it has identified seven columns. Yes, my data has headers, so I click on it. And the thing I want, the, where is the text I want to analyze? Well, I want to analyze the abstract. So go for it, and it just wants you that. Can I use the on this column? It's a bit on yes. Yes, it's exactly the point. Then it's gonna ask you which is the language of the text and why is it asking you that? Is because uh, the app has a list of stop words. You know these very frequent words that nobody cares about. It has a list of these words for 20 to 30 languages. So you can upload text from any language, uh, you know, any of these languages. I think they are listed there. So we have English, that's English. And if you need more parameters, yes, that's the case actually. What do 
remove it. So, oh, that's interesting. I told you that, you know, is it gonna remove uh, words that are not frequent? The parameter is not visible here. I think I should add it. Um, so, remove small words, like the words that are super small, sometimes they are, or often they are not super interesting, so I'm gonna remove the words that are uh, four characters or less, four letters, you know. And yes, and specifically, I want to remove academic stop words uh, because uh, the terms in the abstracts are very specific to, you know, the academic way to write. So you have a lot of in conclusion or, you know, uh, we formulate the hypothesis or um, a lot of um, basically rare words but are, that are super frequent in, in science and which are not informative. So since we are analyzing scientific texts or academic texts, I choose to remove specific uh, academic keywords. Um, and not many users have, uh, I didn't have feedback on that, but uh, you, you are able to upload your own list of stop words. Uh, you need to click on choose and, uh, and okay, so you confirm your options and you just click on compute and hope for the best. Yeah, well, it seems nice, but uh, again, preparing for this session, I was not super impressed by the final result as I could, uh, as I could, uh, uh, you know. So let me download it in for Giphy. So it downloads a, a GXF file that I'm gonna, uh, that I'm gonna open with you. And we're gonna conclude on that because it's 4 p.m. here in Paris. Uh, so results, the name of the co-word, co-word, that's the name of the function. Okay, I can open it with Giphy now. you for two seconds just the, the time to I'm sorry for that I think Giphy is is uh, having trouble processing you know okay never mind I'm gonna do something else I'm gonna double click on the file gonna open it in Giphy, I hope so. Yeah, you should see it here. Oops, nothing like that. Okay, so the nodes it found are 1525, and I just wonder, you know, what was the criteria? What Did it take all the words that were at least present twice or three times in, in the abstracts? Uh, the parameter is not visible in the app, so it's not good and I should add it. And, and the user should be able to change it. So, yeah, okay. So as you, if you know Giphy, you're not surprised by that. It's always the case, you, you have all the nodes um, packed randomly in the middle, so you apply a force atlas layout. If you're curious about that, I have the video, maybe the first one of these Twitch sessions where I explain how to use Giphy from A to Z. So hop, let's watch the, yeah, I'm not super convinced it's gonna be great because, let's see, I, I would need a lot of user feedback to basically uh, improve. So what do I want? Yes, I want to uh, make bigger the terms in the network that are the more frequent. So the app has been useful, uh, has been uh, helpful. It has 
created an attribute to the nodes which is called uh, count terms, so the number of time uh, uh, the term appears. And I should Oh yeah, I can see them, it's, they are super small. Strange, why, why is that? Oh, maybe because, yeah, okay. The labels should be scaled with the not size. No. No, but the not is small, so why? I'm a bit lost uh, here. Okay, well, okay, well. Just count down. Why are the things so small? So I let's go to the data laboratory first. So the data lab is the place where you can have a view on your data. I'm gonna rank the nodes and yes the most uh, frequent term is explainable followed by explanation followed by artificial explainable artificial intelligence which is a good sign right and the least frequent terms appear three times okay I have, now I have my answer the app filters out the terms that appear just once or twice. But the, back to the visualization, why is my why are my why are my labels not visible? I'm a bit surprised. Anyway, I'm gonna do what I do usually. I'm gonna apply community detection um, because it's gonna color the nodes. So first I apply a community detection algorithm to, to uh, detect you know, uh, meaningful groups of, of terms in the network. Then I colorize the network according to these groups. Okay, now I switch to black a dark background I'm gonna give the nodes color of the nodes color of the object that's yeah, super strange you know I don't understand that this thing is so small there is something I don't why is the thing so small Let's do 100. Okay. Okay, strange. It's just, it's just that I need to use huge values to have the things visible. Okay. Okay, so what we see here, you know, is something I'm not happy with. So basically, I see that the most uh, frequent terms in the network, explainable, explainable artificial intelligence, and the last one, explain explanation, they are completely outside of the network. They are not in the center. And there is something fishy about that. because I would have expected them to be the most uh, connected and that would place them in the center usually. Not always, but I mean, in the usual case, they would be in the center. So I, I'm, I'm gonna investigate that. Uh, there is something I don't fully understand. Uh, but so I would really love your feedback on this, um, on this function. 
um, and in particular, don't hesitate to push me for updates and quizzing me about you know the, how this thing evolves. But where I'm not satisfied at the moment is that um, the most, I mean, the the words that, that are used everywhere in the text should be at the center because they, are, they would be connected with the others. So. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, there is one thing which is that, and I'm going to conclude with that, it's not the easiest, but uh, that it's super important. One possibility of this result is that uh, it would be the, it would be caused by the fact that uh, the application is applying uh, a function called pointwise point wise mutual information PMI pointwise mutual information and I have a blog post on that which is short and non-technical so I'm gonna give you a link to it but it's super simple it means that if two words are super frequent in the text so in this case you know explainable artificial intelligence and explainable. I would expect them to be super frequently used in abstracts because I search for these terms. If two terms are super frequent in the text, of course they're gonna be appearing together often. It's just because, you know, they are, they are so common that they are bound to be in the same lines often. And it's not super informative to have a strong connection between two terms because they are often connected together just because they are just popular terms, if you want, like, you know, because they are everywhere in the text. What is much more interesting is to have strong connections between two terms that appear infrequently in the text or relatively infrequently. But when they appear, it's always together. That means that these terms have something to do with each other. Because even if they are quite infrequent, so they shouldn't be often in the same lines, just because, you know, we have so many lines. Even if they are so infrequent, they still uh, appear on the same line. So in this case, the connection is super meaningful. And the pointwise mutual information, even if it's a kind of a fancy technical term, it's a simple, super simple way to correct for this, um, you know, frequency of terms effect. And I'm, I'm just wondering whether that would be the, the underlying cause for, for the fact that explainable uh, has a lot of connections, but all these connections are weak. And why are they weak? It's because explainable is so frequent. Um, actually, the more I think of it, the more I am convinced that's the reason. And, and what's the remedy for that? What I do usually, and if you have two minutes more, I'm gonna do it now. The remedy is that usually I remove these terms. And the reason is that let me go back to I remove explainable explanation and explainable uh, artificial intelligence because these are the terms that you know triggered my search so I don't really care that they belong to the network because of course they are in the network because they were like you know the precondition to appear in the text so let me remove them if I remove no maybe delete all or just delete. Well, let's try delete all. Confirm nodes deletion. Uh, well, just this three, please. Yes, great. And if we move back to the network, so I have to reapply for Satellite 2. I'm going to remove the display of the edges so that it gets so that. Is a bit less. OK, 
Okay, I stop it. And I show the edges back. Sorry for being so long, but I'm gonna apply the I reapply the modularity statistics because of course now with these three big nodes removed uh, the modularity is super low. effect of having this very remote uh, I, I'm gonna have to think again about that but I'm, I don't find it super useful to have these key terms image classify algorithm interpretability data set I mean you know they are just at the periphery and so what's in the middle oh, nothing nothing super frequent so it's work in progress but i used i used this function in well in in, in a previous version uh, to analyze abstract and it was giving super good results so i'm gonna have to go back to this earlier version and see what it was doing that this new version is not doing okay never mind interesting more research to do. Uh, well, thank you, and especially to the last viewer who uh, is, uh, you know, who stayed to the end. Um, um, I hope this. Okay, so this last function is is not finished uh, really, and it needs some improvements. But the two first ones are super robust and super useful. I hope. Um, so please uh, use them, and uh, and yeah. I don't know what is going to be the topic for next week. Um, we'll see. Maybe I'm going to ask for suggestions. And, uh, and otherwise, um, I don't know. I'm going to find something. Hey, Veronica, thanks a lot. <laughs> At least thanks to you, I could, you know, I could demonstrate the export to uh, those viewer for the, for the two previous functions. Otherwise, uh, this would have been broken. So uh, thanks a lot for for alerting me on that. And as you see, Ver Veronica, yeah, I'm, I'm not finished with this last one. It's gonna be brilliant, you know, if you can go directly from, from a text to, to, um, to a, a network that makes immediately sense in terms of the topics it highlights. Um, I would love that, uh, but it's not, uh, we're not there yet. Have a good day, Veronica, and have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye.